this is going to save you a bunch of time okay if you're not doing this you're missing out yo Oglan, hope you're having a great day now i recently got a comment on one of my videos asking how to add custom functions to your midi keyboard to your midi keyboard buttons and i'm going to show you exactly how that's done in fl studio 20 today as well as how to add custom functions to your midi keyboard modulation wheels and any knobs and just pretty much anything on your keyboard this is going to show you how to link it to a parameter in fl studio so that you can create shortcuts and mix and create beats way easier way faster okay so definitely stay through to the end now if you don't know who i am i'm jay carter ray from jaycarterray.com teaching you how to be better at music online business and online marketing this is the number one spot for musicians and creatives that don't want to be starving eyes so if that sounds like you click on that subscribe button check out the rest of the content on the channel because you will love it here guaranteed okay now my question of the day is what midi keyboard are you using right now let me know in the comment section down below now let's get straight into this shall we now if you don't know how to get your midi keyboard set up with fl studio right now then go and check out my video on how to set up your midi keyboard in fl studio and that will show you how to connect everything okay now i'm going to show you how to do this with a stock plugin and how to do this with a third party plugin because they do work differently. So first of all, let's go to this plugin, which will be FL keys. And here I am going to basically change the pan or connect the pan to a knob on my keyboard. So in order to do this, we right click the thing that we want to change. We go to link to controller and then we just move the parameter on the keyboard. So if I pan this all the way to the left on my keyboard, you'll hear that come in. I don't know why this is coming in the right. And if we go to the right, it comes in the left somehow. <laughs> I don't know. Is this the wrong way round? Nope, that's definitely the right way round. That's just a weird quirk of FL Studio, I guess. So that's how that works. Very, very easy, very, very straightforward. Now, if I was to open something like, okay, so now contact is up and running. Let's open up XHEL. Let's grab this starter thing. Let's go to tools. Let's go to last tweet. There we go. As you can see now it's saying contact, macro three amount. And if we go to link to controller now, we can change this by moving our little knob. So now I can move this around. I need to move this way out. <laughs> there we go. Now I've got free reign of moving this around. Okay, something that's super important that you need to know is that what I've just shown you to, you know, right click and link can link to controller that will only work for the project that you're in that's a project by project basis in order to create a global link that works in every project that you create what you need to do is you need to click this button up here multi-link controllers then you need to tweak the thing that you want to change you can do more than one you can tweak this and then tweak that and then tweak that and then you can right click up here and go to override generic links and when you do this now you can actually move the what's it called fader on your actual midi controller like i just linked this master track to a fader on my midi controller and now this will be linked in all your projects moving forward now with this you can click this and then link free faders at once so you'd click this and then you'd move this you'd move that you'd move that and then you'd press right click go to override generic links and then you'd first move the first layer or first fader that you want to use and then you'd move the second fader and then move the third fader and so on and so forth that's how that works so let's actually open up a new project and see whether this is working or not okay let's click the mixer 
and as you can see we've opened up a new project and we can still move the levels and you can you can do this with other plugins as well it doesn't just need to be with the mixer i just think it's easier to show with the mixer and something that i would personally do with my future you know link ups and whatnot if i had multiple faders on this midi keyboard i would definitely link it to every mixer that i generally use now this is my rmb trap beat mixing template if you didn't already know there's a link down below for you to download it or go to jcarterray.com forward slash rmb trap fl this will help you mix your beats in half the time and have your beats half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage so if you want to save time and have your beats sounding better and more professional check this out okay now that's basically that in the whole school of creating links to your controller and all that sort of stuff now there is something else you should know about and that's how to actually delete these links so in order to do that if you've created a link and you're like oh this is a dead link i don't really want to use this anymore all you need to do is go to image line go to fl studio go to settings go to mapping go to generic and here you will find the different mapping files so we can just get rid of this straight up and as you can see it was created today and if we delete that then this will no longer be applied to every project moving forward okay so that's how you delete your global links and that's all you need to know in order to create custom links to your midi keyboard to your midi keyboard buttons and whatnot in fl studio 20 i hope this video has helped you out if you've got any questions or any other tutorials you want me to make please let me know in the comment section down below as i'm super happy to make videos for you and to answer your questions and in the next video you'll learn more about music online business and online marketing i'll see you there peace out